right, so let me ask you a personal question today. How often do you find yourself scrolling on social media and you see all these amazing artists post their incredible artwork? Like over here is a video of the incredible Kim Jong Yi and him creating something out of nothingness. Or over there, Karl Kopinski is drawing something incredible, not just with one hand, but with two hands simultaneously. Or further down the feed, you might see Stephen Bauman and his exquisite value renderings. And before you know it, you feel it. Envy. If you're a living, breathing person with a heartbeat, chances are that you know just what I'm talking about. And there's nothing wrong with you, but because you're probably struggling with the same thing that I'm struggling with and that everybody else is struggling with, I'm making this video for you. And not just about how to deal with this feeling of envy, but how to actually turn it into something useful for your own creative growth. Before we dive in, I would love it if you could support this video by giving it a thumbs up. Like this, other artists like you can find it in the algorithm as well. And if you're at a point where you're ready to truly finally master drawing, you might want to subscribe because that is what this channel is all about. I love to get people to a place where they master drawing so they can enjoy the freedom that comes with that. I've been doing this for over 12 years for artists in fancy art schools, as well as for artists who are just privately working with me through my online program. And I'd love for you to become part of this community. With that said, let's get into today's topic. Let's begin by talking about when envy gets triggered and put that into context first so we fully understand the triggers before we then dive into the strategies to deal with it. And while I chat, you can watch me work on my holiday cards. Okay. Usually, we get envious when we're comparing ourselves to others. This can happen in a real-world setting, like during a figure drawing session that you're attending and you thought you were doing just fine until you walked around the room during a break and you saw Tina over here drawing up a storm, leaving everyone around her in the dust. Compared to Tina's brilliance, we feel like an amateurish fraud and our joy for drawing just went poof. Or, of course, more frequently, we'll start the comparison spiral as soon as we see all the brilliance on the various social media feeds like I mentioned in the intro. And because we're all guilty of spending so much time on our devices, this will happen a lot to us. So let's just pause for a second and remember that us feeling this way doesn't make us morally defective. Comparison is an evolutionary adaptation that we all have to contend with. So you feeling envious doesn't mean that you're bad. Before I move on and give you some strategies on how to harness your envy to your personal benefit, let's also pause and put what I just said into perspective. We tend to compare ourselves to those who we perceive to be better than ourselves. Now, this can mean more prolific than us, more technically accomplished than us, or more creative, inventive, and unique than us. Especially when we're getting triggered online, we have to remember though that we're only seeing a carefully curated portion of these people's outputs. No one goes around posting their crap drawings or makes five empty posts documenting that yet again they didn't draw today. No, people post the things that they're proud of or when they feel like they have something of value to others. We don't post the bad, not because we don't have it or because we want to purposefully mislead people that we don't have it, but because in general, people want to contribute good stuff and not just mediocrity. So keep in mind that what you're seeing is a filtered version of another artist's output, not the full picture. And let's come back to that workshop environment example. Um, we want to remember that we don't know the full story here. How long has Tina been practicing drawing that made her so good? How much training has she had? What experiences has she had that made her able to integrate her training so well? And on top of it, maybe, just maybe, even Tina still feels quite inadequate about her output. Maybe she's proficient at busting out amazing quick sketches, but what she's really yearning for is making experimental tonal landscape drawings, but she's too stuck to know how to get started with that as well. Point being, it's a waste of our energy putting our attention so much outside of ourselves and instead we want to redirect the energy and bring it back to our own front step, which leads me to the what do we do with envy portion of this video. When we're realizing that we're in an envious frame of mind, the first step is to actually acknowledge the elephant in the room and acknowledge what's happening. The more we resist something and pretend like it's not actually happening or not a big deal, the more that feeling is going to persist. And not just that, the more it's going to control our subsequent behavior. So once you feel it, just pause and call yourself out. Like, 
dude, I'm totally envious right now. Now, instead of being ashamed of that, celebrate and get curious. Why celebrate? Because first of all, if they can do it, that means you can do it too. Once we see something done, it gives us an inkling of what's possible for ourselves. And without it, we wouldn't be on the journey we're currently on. If you'd never seen the incredible creative feats, let's say, of the old master paintings, making you feel all the feelings, or all the books filled with fantastical illustrations, chances are you'd have never thought of pursuing this for yourself on your own. I know I wouldn't have had the idea of pursuing art had I never seen my grandpa's sketchbooks or the works of Brian Froud and Ellen Lee. Now, this is where I have to interject and ask you to investigate your relationship with the idea of talent. Do you subscribe to the old notion that only those very few with that very elusive um, je ne sais quoi will be able to create gorgeous works of art? Or are you ready for an updated, more realistic and empowering belief that states that talent is a nice to have, but not a must have? A must have when it comes to art is passion and grit. More about this in a minute, but talent is truly optional. So not only do you want to celebrate the possibility of you getting there to one day, whatever your there is, but you also want to celebrate the people exemplifying where it is you'd love to end up. Yes, give those artists who make you feel envious a high five, like their stuff and send them good vibes because by doing so, you're not just sending them good vibes, which actually feels good. You're also sending subliminal messages to your own subconscious, affirming that this is in fact what you'd love to be able to do or have too, as opposed to sending out vibes of scarcity and mean spiritedness, which in turn would link what you see with negativity, sending your subconscious the message that this is to be avoided. Once you've acknowledged what's happening and you've put yourself in a positive frame of mind, the next step is to get curious. The great thing about envy is that it always comes with a message for us. We don't get triggered by stuff that we don't care about, right? So let's say if Uncle Todd shows you his fly fishing swish and you're not into fly fishing, you're not going to turn green with envy no matter how good his swish is. It's more likely that your response will be good for you, Uncle Todd. Now shut up and hold still so I can draw you. So when envy does come up, get excited because it's your chance to find out something really meaningful about yourself. To do so, here's what you'll want to do. Grab a piece of paper or your sketchbook and write about three instances that made you feel envious recently. Now elaborate and dig deep and answer the following. Number one, what exactly is it that you're so envious of? Is it the other artist's technical ability? Is it the size of their online following? Or are you envious of their professional opportunities and lifestyle? Get really precise and then answer the second question. Why? Why do you want to have their technical ability? What would you do with it if you had that technical skill? Or why do you want to show in this or that gallery? Is it about the perceived legitimacy that you think this will provide? Is it the potential for selling artwork through the gallery system? Or do you just want to be part of that particular group that hangs out with that gallery? Now, I know this may feel uncomfortable, but the more honest you get with yourself, the more you can turn this envy into something beneficial. Once you've done this work, there are two more questions to consider. Number one, are you willing to put in the required effort in your own life to get these results? And do the results that you're describing actually align with your goals and circumstances in life? Let's begin with the effort question. It's very rare that the good stuff we envy other people for is a result of pure luck. Chances are that the artist we admire most has had extensive training, practiced like a dog, and sacrificed many aspects of their life to get to what we end up seeing. Sure, maybe they had a lucky break, maybe they had a good dose of aptitude to begin with that we may or may not have ourselves, but had they not persistently put themselves out there, that lucky break and aptitude wouldn't have made much of a difference. With that said, take stock of your own current life. For the ideal that you are aspiring to, are you putting the adequate amount of time and more importantly, the adequate amount of focus into your art practice? Meaning, do you sketch at random times, random things on autopilot 
or have you established a practice schedule and a strategy for what to practice, when to practice that you actually stick to? I'm gonna put in a little link on the top corner if you need help with that. We don't get to where we want to go just by letting the currents of life drift us to get there. If we do that, we'll end up far from where we want to go. Anything worth pursuing in life will cost us something. That may be money, time, and certainly focus. Not all of us have money to invest into our dreams, but we all have free moments and a certain degree of agency. Are you using yours in service of your dream? And if not, what can you rearrange in your life that would sync up your day-to-day with the steps required to getting you to where you want to go? Which leads to that other question I mentioned. It's really easy to get swept up in other people's goals and dreams or in old versions of your dreams. See, I used to want to be an oil painter who makes money showing at art galleries. But after some real grappling with what I actually wanted creatively and navigating bouts of resulting depression because I was pursuing something that didn't quite fit, I had to acknowledge that this was an outdated version of my dream. It seemed a good enough dream at one point in time, but after having lived it for a while, I realized I wanted something else. I didn't want to have the pressure of every piece needing to be good enough for gallery wall. I didn't want the pressure of trying to make my creative explorations fit into a neatly packaged body of work that a gallery might be interested in. And I didn't want to make work for wealthy collectors. I wanted my creativity to be mine while also benefiting others like me. Of course, you may be different and a gallery arts lifestyle may be just what you need. I'll be the last to judge you for it if that's what feels 100% right for you. The point being is, we don't want to rearrange our lives and go all in on a dream that isn't fully ours. And this leads me to my last step for you. If the answer in your investigation comes back as a full on yes, this is what I want and it's truly aligned with my personal creative values, the last thing left is to act on it. Had I not allowed myself to pursue what I thought at the time was my dream, I wouldn't have gotten the feedback necessary to adjust my direction and get to a much happier place in life at this point. Don't hold back waiting for the perfect iteration of your dream. Clarify it for yourself to your truest ability at this point and then act on it. Sign up for that class, set up a practice schedule that works for you, Put your ass where your heart wants to be, as the great Stephen Pressfield would say. And then any feedback you notice arising in yourself along the journey as you're acting, as you're doing, it will simply be more information helping you to adjust the course. So let's sum this up. When we're envious of other artists, remember to first acknowledge what's happening, then celebrate in gratitude for it happening and for what's possible. Next, get curious and fully investigate with the questions I presented to you. And lastly, act. Let's stop thinking that we're bad people for feeling envy, that we're defective for feeling envy. And instead, let's see envy for the valuable information it actually is. And I'd be honored if you shared your dreams in the comments below with me. And please know that I am here cheering you on.